Hello everybody and welcome back to more Plants vs. Zombies. So, last time we tried out the Vase Breaker mode and it was very short and very interesting. We, uh, it was basically just a repeat of the minigame that we played in, in Adventure Mode. Today, however, we try the puzzle mode that I've been looking forward to, I Zombie Mode. We are actually not visiting Zen Garden to begin with because this is being recorded directly after I finished the Vase Breaker episode, so there's nothing new in Zen Garden for me to do. Yeah, so we cleared all the Vase Breaker generic levels last time. We did not try Vase Breaker Endless, so I'm gonna save that for later. Today, we try out I Zombie Mode, which is very, very interesting. As you can see already. <laughs> the zombies asked me to help them practice invading houses. I told them it'd be okay as long as no plants were on them. So I put a bunch of cardboard cutouts on your lawn. Have fun! Eat all of the brains to pass the level. So, now we play Plants vs. Zombies, but this time we play as the zombies. <laughs> yeah, so this is a very interesting mode. So to win as the zombies, we don't just need to get to the house. You can see there's a brain on each lane. We need to get a zombie to the brain and eat the brain in every single lane. We also, uh, we need to spend sun in order to create zombies, and we only have 150 sun to work with. However, as we eat sunflowers, we get more sun. So it's very, very interesting. And also, we can put the zombies anywhere to the right side of this red line. So to start, we're going to get a regular zombie. This is a road just with nothing but sunflowers, so this is a perfect lane to go in. We can point him right here, and he just immediately starts going to town. Which is pretty cool. So he'll keep eating those. So we have regular zombie, buckethead zombie, and football zombie. Now because this lane has free pea shooters and a snow pea in the back, we're gonna need football zombie for this lane. This lane up here has a squash right at the front, so we're gonna get a regular zombie just to trigger the squash. Just like that. Regular zombie here eats the brain. All is right with the world. This lane down here, I'm gonna use a regular zombie. He'll be able to eat this first guy and then trigger the squash, and then we can send a second regular zombie behind him. And two regular zombies is cheaper than a bucket head. One thing that we want to do is, uh, again, in the iPhone version, there's an achievement for this first eye zombie level to finish it with at least a thousand sun remaining, which is actually not too tough. So for this lane up here, I'm trying to think if a regular zombie will be able to reach the squash and trigger it in time or not. I think he will be able to. I'm also trying to figure out if I can send a bucket head in this lane or if I would need a football zombie. I think it'll just depend on how much sun is left. Okay, I don't think he's gonna... Yeah, he's gonna die before he triggers the squash, so... Bit of a shame, but... And here I'm gonna send a second zombie early, so that way... The pea shooter will hit the zombie in front of him with some of the shots early to just conserve his HP a little bit more. And we have more than enough sun now to use a football zombie for this lane, just for safety. So yeah, iZombie is very interesting. The levels, you might think, oh, this looks really easy. Uh, some of the levels get very tough. Very tough indeed. Get him, football zombie. I love how Crazy Dave is just like, yeah, I'll totally help the zombies practice their, like, invasion techniques. Just make sure you don't hurt any real plants. Nice job, football zombie. And that gives us a trophy. Hey, we get $1,000 for these trophies, because they're fat. They're not quite as fast as the Vase Breaker ones. We get a new eye zombie level. And once again, eye zombie in the iPhone version, this first level you just have once you unlock puzzle mode, but the rest you would need to purchase the eye zombie pack from Crazy Dave's store, which is again, I believe 50,000 to purchase, which is a, a pretty steep price. Now we have eye zombie too. So here we've got regular zombies, screen door zombies, and bucket zombies. Screen door zombies are very nice because they're slightly cheaper, have just as much HP, just don't put them in the uh, spike weed lanes. So to start it off, but yeah, screen door zombie, we're gonna put him in this lane. Because the snow peas are not going to affect him at all. We're also gonna put a screen door zombie on that lane. Oh. 
This lane is a little annoying because we got a spike weed and a snow pea. But I think a, I think a screen door zombie will be able to walk over the spike weed. As long as he doesn't attack this from the spike weed, we should be okay. But of course he is. We're still okay. Cool. Then we can do screen door zombie in that lane, and bucket head zombie in that one. Yeah, as you can see, not as many sunflowers here, and a little more danger. But that's okay, we got screen door zombies, so... And we still finish with a thousand sun or more. I love screen door zombie, he's great. I wish we got screen door zombie for more of these eye zombie levels. Nice job. So that one, I'd say, is easier than the first one. <laughs> Once you know how the screen door zombies work. And we get another eye zombie level. How wonderful. Can you dig it? Alright, so here we've got the digger zombie. It costs the same as the buckethead zombie. And remember, digger zombies dig under everything. One thing, two, and, and he attacks from behind. Now, one thing that's important to know is that if you send a digger zombie in a lane, then you will need to send another zombie in the lane to eat the brain later. So, sometimes he's not worth it. However, this lane right here is perfect for a digger zombie. Also, digger zombie will hit potato mines if he uh, passes under them. So, that's a no-go. So, for this first lane, we're going to send a regular zombie. He'll blow up, and then we can send a second regular zombie just to get the brain. And that'll be the most efficient. Then we'll send a bucket head in this lane down here. He can absolutely deal with two pea shooters by himself. And part of the strategy for Eye Zombie is figuring out how what the easiest way of defeating the sunflowers is. So for example, I'm gonna send a digger zombie followed by a regular zombie in this lane, but there are no sunflowers there. And because you only start with uh, 150 sun, you gotta watch your sun cost at the beginning. But now that we've got more sun, I'll send him this way. I'll send a regular zombie here because I think he'll trigger the potato mine before the split pea can do anything about it. I'm gonna send a bucket zombie here. Because the torch wood is at the beginning, we can eat it pretty much instantly, and then these guys are just pretty much non-threatening. I don't think a regular zombie will be able to take out this guy, so we'll send a bucket head. And then a regular zombie can finish this guy off. And there we go. Bada beam, bada boom. Digger Zombie is fun, but oftentimes he, be, again, because he can't really eat the brain himself, you need to spend a bare minimum 175 sun in a lane if you use uh, Digger Zombie. So, it's oftentimes just not worth that investment. But he's still fun to use. Nice job, my zombies. <laughs> Another trophy for me. And we get another eye zombie level. How grand. Totally nuts. Okay, so this introduces walnuts and we got the ladder zombie now. Fun. So this is a great example of a level where we're going to need to think carefully about which lane to go to first. We want one of these two sunflower lanes. So, um, a buckethead zombie might be able to get through all of this before he dies, but walnuts have a lot of HP, so I'm going to use ladder zombie first. Make something to go over this. That way he can start getting more sun for me. I'll put, do the exact same thing down here. And then I'm going to use a regular zombie. I don't think ladder zombie is going to be able to get through all that unscathed. But if I put a regular zombie behind him, ladder zombie should absorb enough HP for me. Oh, shoot, I didn't even need regular zombie. Ladder zombie actually was good enough to do it all on his own. Whoop, I just wasted sun, but that's okay. These other two lanes are going to be a little tougher. So here we're going to send ladder zombies, and then we're going to send more ladder zombies, so we'll walk over it. And remember, ladder zombies' ladders will absorb snow pea shots. Now, the thing about Fume Shrooms is that uh, they can hit multiple zombies at a time. So I actually would need a bucket head for that lane. So that one was a little more strict on the sun quantity, and I definitely did not do that as efficiently as I could have. But we still have plenty of sun left at the end. So no need to worry. Brains. 
Eat up that brain. And another trophy is ours. Man, puzzle mode is going by way faster than minigame mode. I love it. And a new eye zombie level is ours. Dead Zeppelin. I love the names. So here we get Bungie Zombie and Balloon Zombie. So remember, Balloon Zombie can fly over everything, but also it's important to note, Balloon Zombie will fly over sunflowers and not eat them, so that's important to note. Bungie Zombie we can drop and he will pick up a plant and then just carry it away. So, but he's also expensive, and again, when you use Bungie Zombie, it's just 125 sun to get rid of a single plant. Oftentimes not worth it. So I think what I'm going to do, so we got two sunflowers in this lane. I'm going to send two regular zombies. One regular zombie would not have been enough. Because again, we killed both of those peas twice as fast as we would have otherwise. Send a bucket head down this lane. And a bucket head down that lane. Oh shoot, I forgot about the magnet shroom. Magnet shroom will uh, just disable your your metallic object. So they all should get to the end, no problem. So I'm gonna send a balloon zombie down this lane just to show off. His balloon gets popped at the end so he can eat the brain. Nice job, party animals. It's amazing how the cardboard cutouts of plants can still shoot projectiles at you. Just amazing. Alright, next eye zombie level is me smash! And here we get the Gargantuar. He costs 300 sun, which is a lot, but, well, he's a Gargantuar, so... <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. We also have Pole Vaulting Zombie, who's only slightly more expensive than the regular zombie, but he can hop over the garlic. Colonel Polt is highly annoying, though. You wanna know why? Because... If he just randomly decides to throw butter over and over again, it can royally screw up your strategies. I'm gonna send a Gargantuar down this lane to get rid of that garlic. Because Pole Vaulting Zombie would not be able to handle that one guy at the very end of the lane. Trigger the, that guy. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. I'm send a Gargantuar down that lane too. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love it. You can hop over this guy, trigger the, the squash. Now we can just send Gargantuars down these two lanes. Yeah, like, hypothetically, if the Colonel Pult just decides to chuck butter over and over again, even our Gargantuar could fall. It's unlikely to happen, but, um... It's not uncommon for a Colonel Pult to be able to deal a high, sizable amount of damage to one of your Buckethead zombies. Just saying. Oh, that's a fun level. I love getting to control the Gargantuars. <laughs> I love how they even take out the, uh, the spike weed. When five Gargantuars enter your house, you know you're in trouble. And they, none of them even had to throw their imp. Yay! New eye zombie level. Zomboogie. And here we get the disco zombie, who for some weird reason costs 350 sun. He's more expensive than the Gargantuar. I know he can create zombies in multiple lanes, but like, still, that's not a good deal, really. Alright, but we're going to try to use him properly. So, I think this lane would be the ideal to use Disco Zombie in. Because the lane above him is just filled with instant death plants. So if we can get a, that backup dancer zombie up here to bypass all that, that would be great. So in the meantime, let's send regular zombie down here to help deal with the choppers. Oh. 
Send another regular zombie down there to finish off the Sunflower and the Chomper. We'll have to send another regular zombie at the end to, uh, get the brain. Okay, for Disco Zombie, we're actually going to plant him all the way back here, so that way he'll summon his first backup dancer, and that will hit the, the potato line instead of him. There are times where Disco Zombie can be worth the sun, but it's they're very few and far between. How did he escape that first sunflower down there? I just don't know. Now the real the real moment of truth will be will he summon another backup dancer up the top? Yes he will! Okay, beautiful. So that will do it for this level. <laughs> Sometimes if he just does not summon a backup dancer up top though, he can get to a point where you just won't be able to summon one, and then you'll have to send another zombie up top. And that can really screw you over. But it worked out in the end for this one. Nice job, disco zombie. Alright, we're nearing the end of iZombie, just two levels left, starting with Free Hit Wonder. Alright, so here we got the Imp and the Conehead Zombie. Conehead Zombie's great, he only costs a tiny bit more than regular zombie and he has way more HP. Imp sucks, so Imp and iZombie is literally, they actually made him worse than he is in Story Mode. In Story Mode, he's basically regular zombie, but faster. In this, he literally can only take three hits and then he dies. It's so bad. Like, in story mode, he could take quite a bit of damage before he died. Nope, not in this. When you control Imp, he's absolute garbage. Which, of course, ain't that just... Ain't that just peachy, huh? Alright, which lane should we deal with first? One of these two Sunflower lanes. Like, if I sent Imp to this lane, I think he would get killed by the Pea Shooter before he could reach the Potato Line. I'm pretty sure. And because it costs basically the same as the Conehead Zombie, Conehead Zombie is usually better. I'll send a Conehead down here. I will send Imp up here to get hit by him. Doggone it, I forgot about the stupid. Let's test my fear. I think he will get killed by the Pea Shooter before he reaches. Yep. That's how bad Imp is. And Conehead died down there. I'm kind of surprised about that. One cool thing you can do with the Digger Zombie that I want to point out. If you use the Digger Zombie, the Magnet Shroom can t pick, take his pick away. If the Magnet Shroom takes his pick away, then he will pop up and then go to the, and then we'll start going to the left. So if you can time it so that the Magnet Shroom takes his pick away when he's like right here, he'll pop up and just bypass the whole lane, which actually can be very nice. This lane sucks right here because of this squash. I'm trying to figure out what to do for, I think, well, Count on you to trigger that squash. Good. Now I think I need a bucket head. I don't think Conehead would be able to survive that much. Alright, that was definitely not as efficient as it could have been, but we got there in the end. Come on, Mr. Buckethead. Some of the plants are a huge pain in the butt to go up against. I would say Colonel Pult is my least favorite in I Zombie mode just because of the RNG involved in it. Oh yeah, look at our money supply now. It's great. All right, and now we've got all your brains are belong to us. 
Let's try it out. Eat all the brains to pass this level. Oh boy. So here we got Imp, Conehead, Pole Vaulting, Buckethead, Bungie, Digger, Ladder, and Football Zombie. Get used to seeing uh, this set of zombies. I'll just say that. And all right. We got some new plants to deal with. Um, Starfruit and Free Peter suck because they can hit other lanes other besides the one that they're in. All right. Where to go first? So, like, this lane up here basically looks like just get rid of all the potato mines, but um, I can't because this Free Peter and the Starfruit will both shoot in the lane. So I want to take out Starfruit lane first, but Magnetroom is going to be a bit of a pain. So... I think maybe I'll send, like, two cone heads down this lane. Scaredy Shroom is nice because... Once we get Scaredy Shroom to cower, that's when we'll send the second one. There we go. That should be sufficient for that lane. Like, Fume Shroom will be able to deal a bit of damage. Starfruit might attack us a little bit, but we should have more than enough. And getting rid of that Magnet Shroom will be very, very nice. But the lanes that have a lot of instant death plants, like the Chompers and all the Potato Mines, there's not really a solid way of getting rid of this. And I don't like this lane either, because we can't use Digger Zombie because of the Split Pea. But then there's this giant Tall Nut in the way. We can use the ladder to get over the Tall Nut, though. Hmm. Alright, at the very least, Digger Zombie's going in this lane. Alright, and then I gotta think about what to do for Free Peter Lane. This is where, like, it's tempting to use Bungie Zombie. I think, in, but Bungie Zombie is so expensive, I think I'd rather use Ladder Zombie to get over this stupid Tall Nut. I'll let him eat this Sunflower before I make my move. I think I'm gonna go Ladder Zombie followed by a Bucket Zombie. I debated doing Ladder Zombie followed by a Ladder Zombie, which might have been better, because Ladder Zombie would protect me from doing this. I'll send an Imp to go get the Brain in this lane. Shoot, I actually may have made- I probably should have sent a second Ladder Zombie. I actually think this guy's going to die. Yeah, he's gonna die. Well, we've got some Sun to spare, so... Because Ladder Zombie is faster, and has decent protection, and would block the shot. So yeah, I should have sent a second Ladder Zombie. If I had sent just a second Ladder Zombie, I'm not sure if I would have needed a Bucket Head. Alright, now that that's done, we basically send a whole bunch of Imps up here. Kind of the same with this one. And for this one, we'll send an imp followed by a pole vaulting zombie. That'll save us a little bit of sun. And there you go. That level is kind of tricky. I mean, we still have 600 sun remaining, but the, the plant setups actually required us to really think. And there we go! The final iZombie trophy, and I believe the final trophy for puzzle mode. And we get a new iZombie level! iZombie Endless. Yeah, okay, so... Vasebreaker Endless is definitely annoying, but it's more tedious and kind of random. iZombie Endless, there's an achievement to get to a streak of 10. So clear 10 iZombie Endless levels in a row. That doesn't sound so bad. Oh, trust me. That is the most legitimately difficult achievement in the entire game. 
And I say legitimately difficult because it really does feel like... It feels like Vase Breaker Endless and iZombie Endless are kind of RNG based. Like, if you just get a bunch of bad setups randomized together, because the levels will be, like, pseudo-randomized. There are a bunch of different templates that they can choose from, where it'll be like, you'll face these plants, but where the plants are is random. And if you just get some bad setups, there's basically no cost-effective way to deal with them. And your sun carries through from level to level, and it's really terrible. And we're, again, going to save that for later on in the Let's Play, because, again, it's one of the toughest challenges in the entire game. And also, unlike last video, this one is actually reaching the half-hour mark, which is usually where I like to keep my videos, but uh, have been kind of bad at that in this Let's Play. Has Stinky collected any money for us? Stinky, you better not be making me a liar. I told I told my fans that you would collect money for me, and thus far, it doesn't look like you've been fulfilling your promise. Okay, well we got twelve thousand dollars. Hmm. No, I'm gonna save up my money. I'm gonna save up my money for uh, something good in the future. That's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. If you tune in next time, we'll be starting survival mode. We'll have to take a look at what that is like next time, because even I am not entirely sure what might be waiting for us in that. There's at least one mode that I'm familiar with that we'll be playing, but there might be a second one as well. So we'll have to wait and see. Thank you again for watching, everybody. And until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.